Welcome to Lesson 4 of this series of STEM instructional programs dealing with the aviation career field and of the forces affecting the flight of an aircraft. In the first lesson to this section of our STEM instructional program, we introduce you to the four forces that impact the flight of an aircraft. Weight, thrust, lift, and drag. In this lesson, we are going to focus on the concept of drag as it applies to aircraft. These same concepts will also apply to helicopters and lighter than aircraft. Drag is the aerodynamic force that opposes an aircraft's motion through the air. Drag behaves and impacts an aircraft as a mechanical force causing the aircraft to slow down. As it acts as a force, it can be represented by a mathematical vector that includes both magnitude and direction. The direction of that vector would be opposite to the vector that represents the motion of the aircraft caused by thrust. Drag is generated by every part of an aircraft, even the engines. Drag is caused by the interaction of a solid body and a fluid substance. There are two conditions that must be met for drag to occur. First, the two objects, solid and fluid, must be in contact with each other. They do not act at a distance as gravitational, magnetic, or electromagnetic fields do. In an aircraft, that fluid is in the form of a gas. When the fluid is a gas like air, it is called aerodynamic drag or air resistance. The atmosphere that surrounds us is a gaseous fluid made up of certain types of atoms and molecules. In a submerged submarine, the fluid would be a liquid such as salt or fresh water. When the fluid is a liquid like water, this resistance to movement is called hydrodynamic drag. In a ship or boat that floats on water, drag would be due to both air and water. Second, there must be motion between the solid object and the fluid surrounding it. Drag is generated by a difference in velocity between the solid object and the fluid. In other words, if there is no relative motion, there is no drag. Aerodynamic drag is dependent upon a number of factors such as relative speed, air density, and air temperature. Those factors also impact the force called lift but there are some factors that are unique to drag. The term relative speed or relative velocity is important in discussing the concepts of drag and lift. By relative velocity we mean that there is a difference in the motion of an object and the fluid that surrounds it either in magnitude, direction, or both. It does not matter whether a solid object is moving through a stationary fluid as in an aircraft flying when there is no wind, or if the aircraft is moving through air that is also in motion. By increasing the relative speed between the aircraft and the air that surrounds it, the force resisting that motion will also increase. Drag increases with the density of the fluid that it is moving through. You could consider density to be the number of molecules in a certain space. The denser a fluid is, the more molecules would be located in a certain space. As each of those molecules has mass, there would be more mass per unit of volume of air. If that is true, then a higher density means more mass. As the aircraft has to move those molecules out of the way to pass through the air, more mass would mean more resistance to getting those molecules out of the way. That resistance is what makes up drag. In this way, the two quantities are directly proportional. More density, more drag. Less density, less drag. The density of air varies with a number of air properties, such as humidity, altitude, and temperature. Humidity equates to the amount of moisture contained in the air. Air with a high humidity contains a large number of molecules of water suspended in it in addition to the other particles that normally make up the atmosphere. Water vapor weighs less than the nitrogen or oxygen molecules that make up the rest of the air 
and takes up about the same amount of space. So when you have more water vapor in the air, the air has less mass per unit of volume, which means it's actually less dense. That holds true until the humidity reaches a certain point when the water molecules start to condense into droplets that are contained in clouds or rain. At that point, density and drag significantly increase because the liquid water is denser and less compressible than water vapor. The atmosphere itself does not have a uniform density. As the molecules that make up the atmosphere have mass, they are impacted by gravitational forces and pulled downward toward the surface of the Earth. Because of this force of attraction, a large percentage of the molecules that make up the air around us are close to the surface of the Earth. As these molecules are being forced together by the mass of all the molecules above them, atmospheric pressure and air density are highest near the surface of the Earth. That density decreases as altitude increases. For an aircraft, that would mean that the higher in altitude an aircraft flew, the less dense the atmosphere would be. Less density, again, would equate to less drag on the airframe. Temperature is a measurement of the average energy contained in the molecules of a substance. That is true for solids, liquids, and gases. That energy causes molecules to vibrate. The higher the temperature, the higher the energy, and the larger the vibration will be. For a molecule to vibrate harder, it will require more space in which to move. To get more space, it needs to push all of the molecules around it away or expand. By making more space, it decreases the number of molecules in a certain area, reduces the mass per unit of volume, and thus decreases density. If energy was removed from the molecules by making them colder, they would slow their vibration, require less space, increase mass per unit of volume, and thus increase drag. In this way, an increase in temperature should decrease the drag on an airplane. We also know that the higher an object gets in our atmosphere, the colder the surrounding temperatures are. While this is true for a number of reasons, we will stick to the impact of temperature on density. If the atmosphere gets colder at higher altitudes, then the air density should increase. The trade-off is that as altitude increases, there are less molecules present. While drag should increase at higher levels due to temperature decrease, the change is offset by the decrease in the number of molecules present. One quantity that is unique to drag is a quantity called frontal area. Drag varies with frontal area of an object, in this case the whole aircraft, not just the wing. The frontal area could be defined as the physical area that you could measure from a photograph taken from directly in front of the aircraft. This is the area of fluid that must be pushed aside to let the aircraft pass. Gases, such as air, may not be solid, but they are most certainly material, consisting of atoms and molecules. A property of all matter, solid, liquid, or gas, is that it has mass and occupies a volume. For an aircraft to move forward through the air, it must push aside the air in front of it. The portion of the drag force that is due to the inertia of the fluid the resistance that it has to being pushed aside, has been called either pressure drag, form drag, or profile drag. This is usually what someone is referring to when they talk about drag. By reducing or minimizing the frontal area of the aircraft, pressure drag is minimized. If an object is placed in a flow of air so that its largest frontal area is perpendicular to the direction of the flow, the largest volume of air must be moved for the object to pass. Drag is at its maximum in this case, and the force of drag and a force called the normal force are equal. The normal force is a force that acts in a direction that is perpendicular, or right angles, to the surface of the solid. 
if the surface is placed at an angle to the flow of air, the normal force is shifted, reducing the amount of drag. This changed is introduced another force, one that acts perpendicular to the flow of air. In this case, that force would push the shape toward the bottom of the slide. This is a key force when discussing aircraft control surfaces. By placing the smallest frontal area toward the flow of air, drag is minimized and there is no parallel force that would interfere with the movement of the aircraft through the air. Drag is also influenced by other factors including shape, texture, viscosity, compressibility, and boundary layer separation, which are beyond the scope of this program. The drag generated by an aircraft passing through the air acts to slow an aircraft down. For an aircraft to accelerate forward, the thrust generated by the engine must exceed the force of drag. In the other lessons in this section, we will be discussing the other three forces affecting flight, weight, lift, and thrust.